Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning is the Gospel just read from St. John as well as Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song. How can we sing the songs of Zion in a foreign land? That was the question the Israelites asked while they were in exile. How can we sing the songs of redemption, the gracious presence of God in our midst, when we are stuck in such gunk down here? We can sympathize with the Israelites. They had been in exile for decades. Their homes had been destroyed, their possessions taken from them. Their very identity as the people of God was in jeopardy. How could they sing of God's miraculous works of saving his people when what they saw with their eyes said that God did not save them? <clears throat> said that they were still in their sins and that they were not going to get better anytime soon. Yes, we can relate to the Israelites. It's hard to sing of Easter joy in the midst of Earth's sadness. It is hard to accept the great salvation of God when there is so much pain, so much suffering, so much sorrow in the world. And yet we have Isaiah talking, singing, and praising God even though the exile was right around the corner. For there were those Israelites giving thanks to God for all his marvelous works in Psalm 98. And who knows what hardship or trial they would undergo next. Have you been there? Have you been in that place of grief and sorrow where it seems that words alone cannot express your heart? And yet the songs of Zion just don't seem right. We've all been. After all, we walk by faith and not by sight. The things that we see and experience every day, well, they're pretty hard to ignore, aren't they? It's hard to sing the songs of Zion sometimes. It's hard to put on that happy, shiny Christian face every day. That's what our Lord is speaking about in John chapter 16, when he talks about the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Helper. The Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of Truth in our text. We could even say the Spirit of Reality. This is the Spirit of Reality that comes in our midst, who calls a thing what it truly is lays the truth of God before our eyes. So what will this spirit do? What will the songs of Zion be? He will convict or convince the world of three things. Sin, righteousness, and judgment. Now, before we get to these three things, it's important to know what the Holy Spirit is actually doing here. He is convicting, convincing, maybe even persuading the world of these three things, sin, righteousness, and judgment. We don't get these things by nature. They aren't obvious without the Holy Spirit. What's more, it is impossible to understand them without the Holy Spirit. Apart from the spirit of truth, the Bible, and indeed life itself, is a closed book. That's why the Holy Spirit has to preach to you and convince you, persuade you of these three things. This gives us the reality of those songs of Zion which we sing. So what does he teach us? Persuade us of. First of all, he teaches us about sin. The world by nature does not believe in Jesus. 
They can't believe in Jesus without first believing that they are sinners in need of the gospel. You would be surprised, though, how many of us basically think that we are good, that people are basically good, maybe have a few hmm, shortcomings here or there. But sin, if there even is such a thing in the world, so the world would think, Sin is more like an occasional blemish. Sin is something to be covered over with a little bit of spiritual makeup. It's not a sickness that leads to death. So first of all, the Holy Spirit has to teach us that we have caused our own destruction, that we are beyond repair on our own, that we cannot get ourselves out of this mess. Holy Spirit convinces us of sin and then of righteousness. Now we get to the good part. <clears throat> the word righteousness is really a work, word, a work that means that God is just and right in everything he does. Now that's important. And what God does is declares that you are righteous. Because of Jesus' death and resurrection. If it's hard to believe that you're a sinner, it is impossible to believe that you are holy and righteous, perfect in every way, washed in the holy waters of baptism. Yet that is what God does. This is the new song. The song of salvation that rejoices in the blood of the Lamb. Holy Spirit convinces us of sin, of righteousness, and finally, the Holy Spirit convinces us of judgment. Now, this is still part of the good part. This isn't talking about your judgment. This is talking about Satan's judgment. The ruler of this world is judged. What this means is that no matter what may come, no matter what kind of gun the devil and the world may throw at you, it means that Satan is judged. You are safe in God's merciful arms. And Satan cannot harm us, as Luther says in the hymn. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth, the spirit of reality. He is the one who teaches you, who convinces you, who persuades you of these things, sin, of righteousness, of judgment. You are a sinner. If God has declared you righteous in His Son, you are righteous, and Satan is judged. You are safe in the arms of your Heavenly Father. So let's get back to that song, that new song that started us off. The church sings the songs of Zion because this is what Holy Spirit gives us. This truth, this reality, which was won at Jesus' death and resurrection, this truth is as real as the suffering that you and I undergo every day. Now sure, you may not be able to see it with your eyes, but this reality is right here, right now. My body my blood given for you. This water poured out over you. These words, I forgive you, echo in your ears again and again and again. That, beloved, is worth singing about. So sing and shout for joy. Sing the new song of salvation, the song which never ends. Sing this song with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven. Sing, with, sing this song with those who have gone before us and now sing in the heavenly choir. You were lost, but are now found. You were dead, and yet you live. You suffer and rejoice as the great shepherd of the sheep, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. Amen.